How's it going guys? Winter Kills here and welcome to a brand new Speedroid deck profile here for the month of September. Uh, of course, post Rise of the Duelist. Uh, very excited to share with you guys this new list. It's a completely new direction that I've taken the deck in. Not to say that I didn't like my previous build. I did enjoy it. I still think the deck makes sense for the most part, especially with the pool of cards that I was playing. Uh, it was just kind of built, I guess, around speed lift and around rubber band shooter. This version is completely different, and I owe a lot of the inspiration for this particular build to Aerosol TCG. I wanted to make a big shout out to this man uh, because his Speedroid guide video that he posted, like I think a week or so back, uh, I checked it out. It was absolutely phenomenal. The only reason I found out about it was because he posted it in the self-promotion channel in my Discord. Um, and I'm super into speedroids. I love this deck. I always say good things about it and uh, The video he made on them and just all the information and everything he did an absolutely fantastic job uh, And I highly recommend you guys if you love speedroids check out that video I will leave a link to his channel in the description and in a pinned comment in the comment section also So if you guys want to learn from essentially the, the master himself check that video out it gave me a lot of inspiration i know it can give you guys a lot of inspiration and you know for me especially not only just for making my speedroid build better but just making better videos in general because uh the editing the organization and all the information and effort he put into that video i just got to give the man huge props so check out his video check out his channel and uh, also speaking of things you guys should check out is imperium duelist if you want to help support the channel or if you want to pick up some of their new dice, like this Mystical Space Typhoon dice. They have many other dice as well, uh, themed after classic spells and traps. There's Scapegoat. Uh, they've also got amazing sleeves, like the ones you see me using here, and amazing playmats, like the one you'll see me be using uh, in this video as well. So check them out down in the description. You can use that discount code WINNERKILLS10 off to save 10% off your entire order, support the channel in the process. And of course, if you guys are buying anything on TCG Player, whether it be a Speedroid deck or anything else, uh, you know you can use that affiliate link to TCG. It's the first link in the description. If you guys shop and check out using that link, I will receive a small bit of the revenue from your purchase, and it will go right back into the channel, and it does help out quite a bit. And if you guys want deck profiles like this early, consider hitting that join button below as well. All right, so of course, we'll go through our quick rundown of the deck profile. So we have three copies of Win the Win Channeler. Three copies of Speedroid Car Turbo. Following that, three copies of Marble Machine. Three copies of Speedroid Teke Tomborg. Three copies of Red Haired Hasty Horse. Then moving forward, we have three copies of Dynatherium. Three copies of Nibiru the Primal Being. Three copies of Ghost Mourner and Moonlit Chill. Two copies of Speedroid Dendaiko Duke. Two copies of Mecha Phantom Beast O Lion. Then we have one copy of Speedroid Rubber Band Plane. One copy of Speedroid Double Yo Yo. One Mecha Phantom Beast Tether Wolf and one Speedroid Terror Top, of course, last but not least. Now we'll go into the spell lineup. Now, for the spell lineup, it's pretty simple. All we have is three copies of Speed Recovery, three copies of World Legacy Succession, one Monster Reborn, and one Upstart Goblin to round out our 40 card main deck. Now we'll take a quick look at the extra deck, and to start, we have not one, not two, but of course, three copies of the Almighty Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. Then we have one High Speed Roid Kite Drake, one Battle Wasp Hama the Conquering Bow, one Clearing Fast Dragon, one Wind Pegasus Attic Nisser, one Adamantipazer Risen Raptite, one Stardust Charge Warrior, one High Speed Roid Chambara, one High Speed Roid Hagoita, and that rounds out all of the synchros for our extra deck. Then moving into the Xyz, we have one Levier the Sea Dragon and one Totem Bird. Then after that, for our only Link Monsters, two copies of the High Speed Roid Rubber Band Shooter. And last but not least, one copy of Mecha Phantom Beast Auroradon. And that rounds out the 15 card extra deck. Now we're going to run through the deck profile one more time, but uh, a lot slower, but a lot more in detail. So if you guys want to figure out why I'm running certain cards, um, what each card does specifically, its role in the deck, uh, stick around for the second half of the profile. All right, so starting off here, we have three copies of Win the Win Channeler. Uh, this card is absolutely fantastic. Uh, we're really, really lucky to have gotten a card like this uh, in Rise of the Duelist. It just essentially uh, adds three more copies to pretty much every single good card we have in the deck. 
Basically, we can discard this card in one other wind monster to add one wind monster with 1500 or less defense from your deck to your hand, except itself. Also, you cannot activate monster effects for the rest of the turn except wind monsters. And then it says when a wind monster control is destroyed by battle with this card is in your hand, you can special summon this card. Uh, so the secondary effect doesn't really come up too often, although it could. Um, you know, it's just a fantastic searcher for the deck. It just boosts consistency through the roof. And it's really the closest thing we'll get to having multiple copies of Terra Top legal in the TCG. So, um, and Aerosol brought up a pretty funny point. It's that uh, most of all of the other Speedroy cards that aren't that great in comparison to Terra Top all have really harsh restrictions. You know, Wind Channeler included, but Terra Top does not. Uh, it's just kind of funny card design, but uh, yeah, you gotta play three of these cards. I wish I had three Starlight Rares, I really do. Um, but yeah, so three copies of Win the Wind Channeler. Then next up, uh, you know, cannot forget about this card. This card is absolutely bonkers. Three copies of Speedroid Car Turbo. Uh, the only tuner, I believe, uh, for Speedroids that can special summon itself uh, while you control a wind monster. Uh, so very, very easy conditions to meet. You're pretty much always going to be able to meet that because 99% of the monsters we play in this deck, you know, are wind monsters and we can access them very easily but it does have another graveyard effect where it says you can banish this card in one speed ride monster from your graveyard and all wind monsters you can currently control gain 800 attack until the end of this turn so it does help to add for otks especially cards with like uh, chanbra and hama the conquering bow uh, we can perform otks like we've never been able to do before uh, and this card just helps facilitate Crystal Wing so much more because, again, it is a special summonable level 3 tuner, has a fantastic synergy with Hagoita, and can allow for better rank 3 plays since, you know, we are playing now Totem Bird and Levier. So then next up, who could forget the one and only Speedroid Marble Machine? Uh, basically, another set of Stratos in the deck. You know, we have Terror Top, we have Win the Wind Channeler, and we also have Marble Machine. Uh, really good normal summon for the deck. Uh, I think one of the best, as you might notice, we're not playing Horror Stilts anymore, uh, just because it's the way this build sort of operates. is just uh, It's just different than the previous build I was running. That build was much more focused around resolving the secondary effect of Rubber Band Shooter to gain the additional normal summon, and to be able to take advantage of the card Speedlift, because I still really do like Speedlift, uh, and I still might try it again in the future. Uh, because I still think that card has some merit, so long as you're basing your deck around it. That's why I was playing the Battle Wasp engine as well, because it is an engine that facilitates that of Rubber Band Shooter and is also a tuner, so it pairs very well with that of Speedlift. So, uh, again, this build is a lot different, uh, a lot different plays to be made, um, and Marble Machine is really one of the forefront normal summons for the deck for that reason, because, again, we aren't playing that of Horse Stilts. Um, and this card is just very, very good, whether you open it or you're getting it off of your rubber band shooter. Then moving on, we have three copies of Teke Tomborg, uh, probably one of the best uh, extenders for the deck since its inception. You know, if you control a wind monster, special summon this card from your hand, tribute it off to summon a speed ride tuner from your deck. So we're most always going to be going for Hagoita, or not Hagoita, rather, uh, you know, Dendaiko Duke or Car Turbo, whichever one we don't really have in that current situation. And uh, yeah, just a fantastic card all around. Very easy to get onto the board. Primary search target, most cases off of Terror Top. Then we have three copies of Red Haired Hasty Horse. Uh, this card I've tried to experiment uh, before in the past, but never was really sold on it. Uh, but this card is just really good. Uh, its level is not the greatest, albeit you can use it in some cases to synchro for a level 8 like Kite Drake. But that's really about it. We're not playing Red Eye Dying here, so you can't really go for level 6 synchros with it. It's mainly just for easy link uh, fodder access because we do want to go into Aurora Down. We do want to go into Rubber Band Shooter, and cards like Red Haired Hasty Horse do help facilitate those plays greatly. Same thing to be said with Dynatherium. Just very easy monsters to get on the board that do not exhaust our normal summon. Uh, you know, like I said, Dynatherium, Red Haired Hasty Horse, same concept, just easy link fodder without burning the normal summon. Another card I wanted to play was Cockadoodle Doo, um, and this is a card I still might put back in the main deck. Uh, I feel like if I were to play this card, I would go back to a more speed lift centric build, 
The only problem I noticed with this card is it does conflict greatly with that of Terror Top. I found in hands where I'd open this and Terror Top, or maybe win the Wind Channeler uh, in this card, it would conflict because then I would have to, you know, forcibly use Terror Top as my normal summon, which drastically slowed turns down. But the fact that this card can hit the board as a level 3 or 4 tuner is pretty interesting, and I definitely do want to experiment with it more. But again, Dynatherium, uh, fantastic card all around. It's a level 4, so you can go into level 7s with it if you want with Dendiko Duke. But again, just easy link fodder. And the summon effect really isn't that big of a drawback, um, especially if you're going first. And even against some decks, whatever card they might bring back usually isn't going to be that big of a threat. Uh, then we're going into the hand traps here. We have three copies of Nibiru, the Primal Being. Uh, this card is just sometimes an outright blowout against some decks. Uh, and then three Ghost Mortar and Moonlit Chill. This card, I don't think, is in of itself that great of a hand trap. This card, honestly, Nibiru and this card, unironically, both are very bad cards against Invoke Dogmatica. Um, but the only reason I think Ghost Mortar has any merit, and again, shoutouts to Aerosol TCG, um, because this card is a wind, uh, and you can start your combos with it, like if you just normal summon it, and special summon a Dynatherium, or, you know, a red-haired Hasty Horse, whatever it may be, you know, you've just gotten yourself access to Rubber Band Shooter. Yes, it might be at, uh, you know, the cost of a normal summon, but hey, it's actually, you know, better than nothing. Um, and Nibiru, again, just going back to it, it's just one of those cards that uh, it's it's very powerful if you see it against a lot of the combo decks, um, and it just some some cases can just outright steal you games. Um, and uh, I I don't think you have to play this card. Uh, I still think Nibiru is a pretty decent hand trap this format, um, and uh, this could be like Ghost Ogre if you wanted to, or Ash Blossom, um, or you could even play Impermanence. Um, which I actually was thinking about playing three copies of Impermanence in here, um, but uh, I made a change in the spell lineup uh, to replace these for the time being, so it's really up to you, whatever you want to do. But Ghost Mortar kind of reminds me of an interaction in Photon Galaxy, a deck that uh, sometimes I don't really feel too comfortable with playing lots of hand traps in because it just decreases consistency, but playing cards like Ghost Ogre and Valor in that deck particularly are nice because you can discard them off of Galaxy Soldier because they are lights. Um, and the same thing can be said with Ghost Mourner, it's a win so you can start combos with it, and Nibiru can just be a very good blowout card against some combo decks. Then we'll move on where we have two copies of Speedroid Dendiko Duke, a really good extender because we can banish from the graveyard to summon a Speedroid tuner from our hand or grave, so we're going to be using this card a lot to extend banishing from the graveyard getting this card off Take Tomborg uh, and linking it off to get it in the graveyard to do more extension plays with. Uh, and it's just a level 3, so it fits very well uh, to get into uh, rank 3 plays or Crystal Wing plays with Hagoita because Hagoita is a level 5. Then we have two copies of Mecha Phantom Beast Olion. Now, Olion is interesting because this card has a lot of synergy. You can discard it off of Win the Wind Channeler uh, to get a token out of it plus whatever you're searching. You can normal summon this card and follow up with a Dynatherium or a red-haired hasty horse, uh, you know, to get into your uh, rubber band shooter plus getting a token back out of it. And resolving Aurora Down is kind of important with this particular build. So even if you draw one, it is nice to have another copy of it in the main deck. Um, and it's a level two tuner. So, you know, what else could you ask for uh, when it comes to, you know, making Hagoita off of your Aurora Down? Next up, we have one rubber band plane. This card is nice as another, just another option for an extender, because you know a lot of times we're going to be using a rubber band shooter to banish a level 8, so we're going to reveal a 5 and a 3, preferably this in car turbo, or this in Teke Tomborg, whichever we really need at the current situation. Just easier access to free summons, um, and it's level 5. It, the level really doesn't matter too much, again, it's just easy link fodder access. The double yo-yo, uh, still in here in some cases where you do need to use the double normal summon effect of Rubber Band Shooter, you're not always going to want to use that because it'll lock you into synchros only uh, because there are some times where Totem Bird and Levier do come up in some combos in a very big way. Uh, a for giving spell trap negation and B for recycling cards like Dendiko Duke for the following turn. But in some cases, you may need to abandon those combos and rely on the old school, you know, banish to level 7, reveal yo-yo terror top, try to get the double yo-yo and combo out from there. So double yo-yo is still important. One Mecha Phantom Beast Tetherwolf. I wasn't sold on this card until I realized how much I hated 
losing to uh, Invoke Dogmatica because of the Al Shadal Winda with the Schism play. This card actually, unbeknownst to me, can out Winda because it does get a token upon normal summon, so it does help us get into Rubber Band Shooter. But it says once per battle during the damage step, when this card inflicts, uh, when this card battles an opponent's monster, quick effect, you contribute one token. This card gains 800 attack until the end of this turn. So this card can run right over Winda. It can also start your turn, and it's searchable via Winda Wind Channeler. So uh, you can essentially play four copies of it if need be. And then last but not least, one copy of the Speedroid Terror Top. Huge shout out to my friend Adam for hooking me up with one of these for breaking up his play set to, uh, to sell me one of these absolutely gorgeous card uh same thing uh thank you for letting me borrow uh the ghost mourners as well so uh if you're watching this again thank you for hooking up your boy hey guys winter from the future here realizing i really never explained terra top in full detail granted it doesn't need much explaining and if it's own right but it is the best starter in the entire deck simply because it does not take up your normal summon and then of course on normal or special it gets you that search of a speedroid monster so you can grab you marble machine to follow up with a normal summon uh, to get you more bodies on board and get you more extenders like car turbo like that of teke tomborg or even rubber band plane whatever it may be and of course being able to play four copies of it now with win the win Chandler is absolutely fantastic so wanted to get out onto the table before we go ahead and continue now we'll move into the spells here where we have three copies of speed recovery this card is just i mean there's really not much to say about it. it's monster reborn on crack for this deck uh, it's not a once per turn which is the best thing about it so if you open like two of these with a really good hand you know you just have two monster reborns in your hand for any speedroid card whether it be you know something like uh terror top uh, Car Turbo, or even one of your synchros like Kite Drake or Hagoita. Whatever it may be, you can revive them out of the grave. And then it has another effect that says if it's in the graveyard except the turn it was sent there, uh, you can banish this card from your graveyard to add a Speedroid monster from your graveyard uh, and add it back to your hand. So, Monster Reborn. Then we are playing three more Monster Reborn. This is where my build differs a little bit than that of Aerosols. Um, I played this card in the past. I only think I played one copy. Um, but, uh, I've noticed so so many times and feel free to play something different than the World Legacy Succession. You could easily play three copies of Impermanence or three Ogre, three Ash or three DD Crow, uh, whatever you want to do. I just wanted to go the turbo route of three Succession. I was playing three Call by the Grave as well as another alternative. Um, but again, seeing Reborn spells with this deck uh, can be pretty important. But then again, uh, that's just the combo turbo-esque side of me coming out a little bit. So if you want to play more hand traps, I'd recommend it. And I'd probably try to add an Ash or Ogre if possible. And then our last two spells are Monster Born because again, one of the best extenders you could have. And of course, uh, Upstart Goblin uh, because we want that consistency uh, as much as possible. So uh, we'll play the one of Upstart just to get to our cards a little bit faster. Now we'll move into the extra deck here where quite a bit has changed. We're still on two copies of High Speed Roid Rubber Band Shooter. I thought about doing, for just a split second, maybe like a Pot of Extravagance build, where maybe you'd play three Rubber Band Shooters, three Aurorodon, three Crystal Wing, three Hagoita, and then maybe like, you know, some two ofs of some other extra deck monsters, because I feel like you could have a chance to possibly make it work. Uh, but for now, we're sticking with the tried and true build. But basically, its effect says during your main phase, you can immediately, after this effect resolves, normal summon one wind monster. Also, you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of this turn, except synchro monsters. You can banish one wind synchro monster from your extra deck, reveal two speedroid monsters with different names from your deck, whose total levels equal the level of the synchro monster. Your opponent randomly picks one for you to add to your hand and you send the other to the graveyard. So that effect is busted. The only thing that sucks about it is that it is randomized on what card goes to your hand. Otherwise, this card would just be extremely bonkers just to choose a uh, speed rate card to dump to your hand and add to your hand. So of course they had to randomize it, but in some cases, in some combo lines, whatever card you get or don't get doesn't matter, which is really, really great. So um, I was a little worried with changing my build up that uh, that would become an issue, but it isn't. Um, and uh, cause like in the previous build, the way we were getting around that was by playing multiple copies of horse stilts uh, because you would just have horse stilts in your hand. Because you'd always banish a level 7 to reveal both Yo-Yo and Terra Top. Uh, so, like, if you got the Yo-Yo, you know, or versus the Terra Top, 
you would still have an extra body on board. Uh, so like if you've got Yo-Yo, it'd be fine because you just revive Terror Top. And if you got Terror Top, you just normal the uh, the Horse Stilts and that would bring out the Terror Top. And then you'd be in the same position either way. But obviously not playing Horse Stilts. So uh, our Banish target changes a, a bit, uh, quite a bit more actually, instead of just always being a seven, which is kind of nice. Aurorodon, this card is great. I've come around a lot on this card. Uh, specifically because using it for just Hagoi to access, I think is the way to go. Uh, in other situations, I tried this card, I really wasn't thinking about it in that sense, so this card is just a lot better than I, I thought it would be. Then under our XCs, we only have two, one Levier and one Totem Bird. Totem Bird is huge because in some hands we can make this card, which puts up Spell and Trap Negation onto the board, and since we're never really using Rubber Band Shooter's first effect to gain an additional Normal Summon, we don't have to worry about always being locked into Synchro, so we can actually play some Xyz monsters. So Totem Burn offering that Spell and Trap Negation says during either player's turn when the Spell Trap card effect is activated, uh, you can detach two Xyz material from this card and negate the activation. If you do destroy it, then this card loses 300 attack while it has no Xyz material. And then of course Levier summons a level 4 lower monster that is banished and special summons it to your field. Uh, so that can recycle then Daiko Duke, which is great. Then into the synchros where we have quite a few. We have the high speed Roid Hagoita. This card is incredible. Basically says if this card is in your graveyard and you control a speed Roid tuner monster, you can special summon this card. Also, you cannot special summon monsters this turn except wind monsters. So that's fine. This is the card that will pretty much always facilitate double crystal wing because of the level five pairing with that of Den Daiko Duke or Car Turbo. Then we have high speed Roid Chanbra. Can make a second attack during each battle phase at the start of the damage step of this card battles against 200 attack. It also has another effect where if it's sent to the graveyard, you can target one of your banished speedroy cards and add it to your hand. So in some cases, you can climb up into a crystal wing with this card and add a card back to your hand in the process. So that can come up sometimes, but mainly just going for game. Two level six synchros, one charge warrior for added consistency if it can come up in some combos. Uh, you know, you can make Crystal Wing with it too if you have a Lion as well and get a draw out of it. And you have Raptite here. Uh, it's like the one of the easiest uh, interruptions we can put out that's a level 6. Um, there really are no other level 6s that I think that are wind that, you know, put up interruptions. So having a DD Crow-like effect monster is very nice for, uh, you know, a huge plethora of matchups. Invoke Dogmatica, Eldritch. Uh, Ad Emancipator, etc, etc. So very good card to have. Then next up for our first level 7 synchro, we have Wind Pegasus at Ignister. This card is nice because, you know, we do uh, have the opportunity to make level 7 synchro sometime, whether we're using Dynatherium in a level 3 tuner or Double Yo-Yo, whatever it may be. Uh, we can get access to level 7s. Uh, and this card is nice because if it does hit the graveyard, you know, we do have the, the ability to use its protection effect. Or if a card we control is destroyed, we can return a uh, card on our opponent's side of the field, you know, and shuffle it into the deck. Uh, so that can come up. It also can come up as spell and trap removal when it hits the board. Uh, so this is a very versatile card. And it's also a very, very good send target if we happen to be playing against Dogmatica. Because we can just send this to our graveyard and give us protection going into that next turn to where if they tried to destroy something of ours. Uh, you know, whether it be with like uh, Dogmatica Punishment. Uh, you know, we can use this in the grave to bounce back their window if they've already gotten it on the board. Uh, then we have Clear Wing Fast Dragon, uh, one of the better level 7 synchros, just a uh, extra deck monster negate and drops the attack to zero. Then we have one uh, Battle Wasp Hama the Conquering Bow. This is basically just a blank level 8 that we're going to be banishing out of Rubber Band Shooter most of the time, but it can also OTK very easily. If this card was Synchro Summoned using a Synchro Monster as Material, aka Hagoita is the card we'll be using, it can make a second attack during each battle phase. You can only use each of the following effects of itself once per turn. When this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can make all monsters your opponent currently controls lose a thousand attack and defense. So that can come up pretty handy as well. Then it says at the end of your battle phase, if your opponent has not taken any battle damage this phase, you can inflict 300 damage to your opponent for each battle wasp monster in your graveyard. So that effect isn't going to come up really at all since we're not playing any other battle wasp cards. But, you know, this uh, boosted by 800 at 36, uh, you know, with the double attack, you know, you can kind of see how that would just add up to OTK's Kite Drake. Another card that is just great in this deck as well because it hits the field it wipes everything other than itself or it negates all their face-up cards our opponent currently controls um, and it's another really great target to send off of maximus these are just two fantastic cards to send 
because when this card hits the graveyard, we get to add a Speedroid monster from our deck to our hand. So basically, we get a free search plus a protection for whatever card we're searching uh, if they Maximus us. And these are just built right into the standard extra deck, which is great. Then last but not least, three copies of Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, because yes, we can make three of them in a single turn. Uh, we're probably in most cases going to be making two. And the third is just a backup. And sometimes the third in grind games does come up quite a bit. And I remember in a recent game uh, that may or may not already been uploaded on the channel, uh, the third Synchro or the third Crystal Wing actually like saved me and won me the game. So uh, against Invoke Dogmatica. Um, so yeah, that's it for the extra deck. Now we'll talk about the side deck. Uh, the side deck really is just basically preference on whatever you're facing in your particular area as far as local events are concerned. Uh, but things you could side out easily would be three copies of World Legacy Succession. That is just a given. Uh, same thing with Nibiru. You could easily side out Nibiru. Uh, you could easily side out the Tether Wolf as well. Uh, if you're not playing against a deck like uh, anything that has Shadal really. So you don't have to worry about needing something that can easily beat over Winda. Um, because in some cases, if people aren't really paying attention, you're going to normal summon the Tether Wolf. If you know you're playing against that deck, you can kind of like lure your opponent into it. Normal the Tether Wolf, you'd be like effect to summon the token, they'll chain the schism. Window will hit the board, then Tether Wolf will resolve, and then you're locked out of your other special summons, but then you're like, psych, battle phase, go and do, you know, attack and the damage up, etc, etc. So you could easily side out the Tether Wolf. Uh, I would side out the Terror Type. No, I'm just kidding. Don't ever side out Terror Type. You could side out Monster Reborn. Uh, you could side out uh, all three copies of Nibiru if it's not a super combo heavy matchup. Um, in fact, I'd probably side this out against Invoke Dogmatica, maybe in place of like DD Crow. Um, but that's really about all I would side out. Everything else is pretty important in terms of consistency. Maybe you could drop the rubber band plane or maybe just one copy of O-Lion. But we do have, you know, a good healthy amount of cards that we can side out. Three, six, eight cards. Uh, you know, Forbidden Droplets, Triple Tactics Talent, Solemn Judgment, a Pointer of the Red Lotus. You name it, you can side it in if you want to, if it fits your local meta. So... That's going to do it for this deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'll be sh I should or will be uploading a live duel featuring this deck. Um, or it will be featured in a new series. And uh, if you guys have seen the new series, One Month, One Deck, check it out. Um, and we'll be playing this deck in that series soon. And I'm very excited to do so. And again, also huge shout out to Aerosol TCG. Um, check his channel out guys check out his speed ride video I'll leave links to both of those down in the description give him a sub toss him a like tell him I sent you and uh, yeah as always winner kill signing out we'll see you guys in the next one last but not least a huge shout out goes to my divine level channel members here on YouTube academic thick Travis Harris and Zors thank you guys so much as always for your continued support